Good morning and welcome to our summer and fall webinar. Uh, today we want to share all the things happening out at Seabrook and some updates on our Main Street and our newest neighborhoods. And uh, many of you on the webinar today uh, are new to us and we want to just give you uh, as much information as we can uh, so you have a better understanding of where Seabrook is headed. So the first thing, um, some of you may, may have seen this in our sales office, but uh, when we decided to build a new beach town, uh, we really wanted to serve the greater Puget Sound. So many people were driving down to the Oregon coast um, and be, you know, living on the Oregon coast when we started with our first community, Bella Beach, we saw this opportunity to bring a beach town uh, much closer to Seattle um, that would rival uh, places like Cannon Beach. And um, when we actually studied the demographics, we found that there was over double the population and over five times the household wealth within a three-hour drive. So um, those people who are kind of surprised to see all the growth out here, um, it really comes down to demographics and um, the pent-up demand that uh, was in the greater Puget Sound uh, for a new beach town. So this is really what, again, drives, drives Seabrook. And uh, with, with all the growth, uh, additional growth that's happening right now in the Seattle, Bellevue, Redmond, Kirkland area, uh, we don't see uh, that changing anytime soon. There's going to be more and more people looking to escape uh, out to the beach, and we believe we're going to be the first um, choice for many of those people. Um, this slide actually just speaks to that pent up demand showing our vacation business. Um, expanding year after year, about 25% a year, year over year growth in revenue. And so the more houses we build, the more houses get rented. And, um, but we are also monitoring our home, our home uh, growth into, on an individual basis. So we also want to see our individual homes also grow. And uh, the majority of those have been doing very, very well um, over these last uh, nine to 10 years. Um, all real estate markets have barriers to entry. Some real estate markets have low barriers to entry, and some have very high barriers to entry. And basically, the, the most stable markets have the highest barriers to entry. Um, if you look at places like Seattle and Portland, um, they have very high barriers to entry because of the urban growth boundary, um, due to water, utilities. And so those markets have been uh, have held stronger than than other markets, say like Atlanta or um, Las Vegas or Bend, Oregon. Um, basically, when you have a limited amount of land and a limited amount of infrastructure, it creates a high barrier to entry. And Seabrook has an incredibly high barrier to entry because there isn't any sewer or water capacity from Seabrook all the way down to Ocean Shores. So Anyone that's driven that stretch of highway has probably noticed that a lot hasn't happened in over 50 years, and that's because there isn't any access to uh, public infrastructure, again, sewer and, and public water. And Seabrook has a brand new system that was put in place um, at the beginning of the project, and that's really what will serve all of our land and, and homes for years to come, so we're very fortunate to have that. Um, second, The second large barrier to entry is just building towns from scratch. Uh, we've learned from the best. We've been mentored uh, by Robert Davis and Daryl Davis and Larry Davis down on the Florida coast who developed Seaside Florida. Recently that was um, uh, in focus on a PBS documentary showing the 10 towns that changed America. It was the only town um, on that list that wasn't, that was designed and built in our lifetime. Everything else was built mid-1800s and early 1900s. And this is back when uh, walkability mattered. We, we built towns that had mixed uses. So basically, everything was at your fingertips. And once the car was introduced, we started to spread out and create what's now considered suburban sprawl and kind of went away from our roots and our heritage of building these towns and villages from scratch. Um, so uh, Seaside was the first to bring that back. And we've been. Um, basically learning from that community and other great new towns around the world um, over the last couple of decades. And, and it's not easily 
uh, duplicated. And so that, again, creates a very large barrier to entry. The third thing is our property management company. We started managing our own cottages and our own communities down on the Oregon coast in 2002. And so we've been do doing that for about 14 years. And we've kind of been pioneers in the industry for communities where, um, again, everything is within a close proximity. So we can do a much better job managing the properties than if the properties were scattered. Most vacation rental management companies uh, manage homes that are scattered um, long distances from each other. And, and we're so fortunate to have a very small footprint so we can monitor our homes, make sure our guests are getting the, the best service and our homeowners are getting the best service. And it's a very unique uh, business model um, on a national basis. So we've been um, really fortunate to grow that business and and uh, become somewhat of a trendsetter in that business. And then the fifth part of this is really just adding five-star amenities. The cottage rental, or I should say the vacation rental industry, is has been exploding for um, the last decade with websites like HomeAway and VRBO, uh, now Airbnb. And so this is a, a huge, huge uh, new industry that really didn't exist 20 years ago or 15 years ago. And, and the reason that it's exploding is because people really prefer homes uh, versus hotel rooms or resort um, accommodations where you have smaller rooms and not all of the uh, public spaces. And so people have chosen to go with vacations where they can have individual bedrooms and large kitchens, um, easier parking, and a, a yard. Um, so with that, uh, most people are giving up amenities. So if you were to, say, rent a vacation rental in Cannon Beach, typically you would give up the swimming pool and other amenities like, such as an exercise room or, or a spa. And so what Seabrook's doing is we're actually taking the best of the vacation rental business, having you know, wonderful homes, but then attaching these great amenities that most people would expect in a five-star resort. Um, so you're basically not you're not giving anything up when you vacation in a place like Seabrook because of our amenities and these great homes. So um, all of those uh, bullet points there really add up to very high barriers to entry um, for Seabrook. And that's what stabilizes property values and maintains property values. And it's one of the reasons we were one of the most resilient second home uh, communities in the country during the downturn is that we there was just very limited supply very high demand, and uh, we had kind of a secret sauce that, that really helped Seabrook grow through um, really unprecedented times. So um, Seabrook's been primarily just cottages at the beach, you know, nice little parks, a nice little restaurant in Mill 109 and, and our market, but um, we are really uh, entering a new chapter here with our main street. And uh, we've now built up the critical mass that actually can support uh, a 50,000 square foot uh, main street. And so we are very focused right now on getting main street built. And I'm going to just share some updates. So this is actually, this image is an example of looking up the street to the east, up to the town hall, if you're familiar with the white town hall building. Um, and you see shops down below and then residences up above on both sides of the street. Here's another view um, looking down the street out towards the ocean. Um, now that ocean view is, is uh, you can tell, photoshopped in there, but just to give you an idea of, of where the ocean is in, in proximity to the main street, because everything looking down or everything on main street looks out to the ocean, uh, which is what will make it such a signature main street and so memorable for, for people that come and visit Seabrook. Um, we have a new spa, a new restaurant, a new grocery store, um, and 15 new businesses planned uh, to be open in the next 18 to 24 months. Um, here is actually showing the north side of, um, I should say, part of Main Street. This isn't the entire Main Street. Frontager's Pizza is right here, if you've seen our new uh, pizza place, which, which is getting rave reviews, our new gym, which is also complete. But to the right, it's showing a new spa and some office space. And then to the left, restaurant. This is a 3,500 square foot restaurant. This is about twice, two to three times the size as, as Mill 109 is right now. And then office space up above. Again, more shops down below. 
with residential units. These are these are single family residential units up above, and then um, a new retail space on the corner, and then four condos up above that. And that's on the north side of the street. That's not the entire main street. There's actually another block over here that connects out to um, our main street entrance. But this this block is is what we're focused on building in this next 18 to 24 months, as well as the block below here, which shows four other new shops, again, with residential units up above. These are two-bedroom units. The other, the other side of the street, these taller, taller buildings are three-bedroom um, live-work units up above. And then a new grocery store, this will be anywhere from six to 10,000 square feet. That's in design right now. Uh, but most of these buildings are either the designs are complete and off to the engineer or um, about to uh, be completed and sent off to the engineer. And then there's also a building here to my right, uh, hopefully you can see my arrow, and uh, that building is also under design, which will have two more townhouses and four more condos. And these condos are, uh, it looks like they're all going to be one bedroom. So we've got a combination of one bedroom units, two bedroom townhouses, and three bedroom townhouses. And to put it in perspective, um, here's frontagers again, showing the corner, and then the gym. You can see all of this red um, property here. That's all Main Street. And so this is all yet to be built. So we haven't even scratched the surface on, on our retail. Um, so the first two blocks here and here are the ones that we're focused on. So 15 new businesses, 18 new residential units, um, and about 23,000 square feet of retail space. And I summarize that in an upcoming slide. And then the next, the next phase would be going to these last two blocks again, on Main Street, but everything looks out to the ocean. And you can see how these blocks are actually canted. They're, instead of just being run at a 90-degree angle out to the main entrance, you can see how these blocks are just slightly canted. And what that does is it actually gives great views from the retail businesses out to the ocean. So anyone walking into a store or walking out of a store um, sees that view. And then, of course, the residential units also have um, the spectacular view out to the ocean. And there it is right there, um, looking out the main street. Uh, just to give you a perspective. And that is the main event. When people are out at the ocean and they're, and they're shopping, we want to make sure they feel connected to the ocean. So here is a summary of, um, again, what's on the first, uh, the next two blocks on main street, 23,000 square feet of retail, 15 new businesses, 5,000 square feet of new office space, and 18 residential units. And our goal is, again, to have all this open within the next 18 to 24 months. And we're going to do our best to make that happen. Um, this breaks down the actual residential units. So eight live works. Four of them are three bedroom, two and a half bath. Four of them are two bedroom, uh, two bath. And then uh, two townhouses, which will be uh, three bedroom. And then eight condos that will all be one bedroom. And they'll probably have the best views on Main Street uh, out on the corners. Some of the new businesses that we're targeting or curating um, is, of course, a new grocery store. Um, we have at least one new restaurant. And right now there's uh, different restaurant tours kind of jockeying for position on that. Uh, a new juice bar that we want to add, a toy store, an arcade an art gallery, which would be the first of a few different art galleries in Seabrook, an outdoor outfitter, um, so jackets, shoes, boots, that kind of thing, and then, of course, a jewelry store. And these are just some of the, the businesses that we're targeting for those next 15 businesses, but there's several others that aren't on this list. And uh, if you're someone that's interested in, in owning a business on Main Street, um, we have a, a fellow by the name of Don Whittles who you can reach out to uh, and learn more about Main Street and what the uh, available spaces are um, when they come available. Um, some of the key ingredients for a really successful Main Street we've learned from a fellow by the name of Bob Gibbs. He teaches retail at Harvard University. Um, we've actually taken his condensed summer course. Um, and Bob was hired two years ago to be our consultant. And he also consulted uh, successful places like Seaside, Florida, that have some of the most successful retail in the country. Um, Seaside, for example, 
averages about $975 per square foot in annual sales. And Bob was, was one of the key reasons that Seaside's had so much success in addition to you know, the developers really curating their businesses there. But he's teaching us all of the um, secret secrets about building a great Main Street. And the first one is, it's called the shop till you drop rule. And basically, we've designed all of our retail within 1,000 feet. So studies have shown that most people are done shopping once they've, once they've walked about 1,000 feet. So um, on our main street, we're actually curating the businesses. So instead of having a lot of competing business, uh, businesses, I'll use Cannon Beach, for example. You know, there might be five candy stores, five bakeries, five places you can get a slice of pizza. Um, on Seabrook, Seabrook's main street, there will only be one place for each of those. And so it makes you actually want to walk into every business rather than um, passing by businesses that you've already stopped by on in earlier sections of Main Street. So the, so the um, Main Street's much more complimentary and much more enjoyable because um, you'll only have one of each. And, and the leases are actually control the uses in those spaces so that we don't have competing businesses across the street from each other selling the same products and the same services and so forth. So that really helps make a much healthier Main Street when you actually curate the businesses versus just kind of leasing to whoever, who, to whoever comes along, um, which is more what other retail districts do. The third piece is just having very passionate owners uh, of the businesses that really care about customer service and you know having great products and a clean environment because everything about everything we're, we're doing here at Seabrook is about the customer experience so from renting a cottage here um, eating in one of the restaurants or shopping in one of the stores um, we want to make sure that, that there's a great customer experience and part of that's also keeping it authentic so all these businesses are individually owned these aren't corporate owned businesses um, we want individuals that you know love their craft, love their love their business, and are experts in their field, um, so that our our customers really get a great experience from the from the business owner who is typically on site, and that's a big uh, big part of what makes great retail districts. So you won't see any franchises here in Seabrook. Uh, you'll only see owner operated businesses. Um, and, and people that are actually living here at the coast and, and loving you know the coastal lifestyle. Then the last piece um, of our Main Street was again we designed the entire Main Street to capitalize on one of our best views of the ocean so that people again feel that connection. So all of those um, again ingredients are what will make our Main Street one of the most sought after places to shop in the Northwest. Um, we welcome this last year Frontager's Pizza. Again, they've they've uh, had great uh, great following, great responses um, from our our guests and owners and visitors, and uh, we just really are are happy to have them out here and and growing their business. And they're looking at other opportunities as well. And and we again couldn't uh, couldn't ask for more from a pizza place out here. And Andy and Eric are very hands on. The two two owners of the business. And you'll see him see him there um, frequently, and that's again what really makes that experience um, a, a positive one. Also, we open Sweet Life Candy Store, which is another great owner operator story. Uh, her dream was to have a candy candy store, and now now she's open, and people just can't get enough. Um, and as my daughter uh, says says, Dad, when when uh, we have a pizza place and a candy store, we're, all, we're a real beach town. So uh, from a 10-year-old's perspective, we're there, but we know that we've got a lot more to do uh, on Main Street to make Seabrook what we've uh, envisioned from the very beginning. Of course, when we started Seabrook, you can't just build a Main Street and hope that it's going to be successful. You have to incubate retail businesses so that they can grow into a Main Street location. So these are all businesses that have been very successful here at Seabrook. And some of them have already expanded. Um, of course, the Salty Dog had moved from a temporary space to a new beautiful brick and mortar storefront. Um, Anne is another great example of an owner operator here. Um, we also, again, Sweet Life was you know, started with a little ice cream 
bike and you know the pizza place started with a pizza truck so these are all examples of businesses growing and incubating spa elizabeth doing a wonderful job they need to expand and we're working on a design for them and the stowaway again another uh, great place to hang out and is is grow or growing out of the space that they're currently in so these are just all examples all the businesses um, seem to be doing very well and um, our our goal is to make sure that they're successful and 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 to work with them to make sure that that uh, again their businesses are are successful. So um, now getting into some of the specific neighborhoods that are available right now and that we're actively selling. Um, the first one that has the most activity right now is actually our farm district. And just to give you some of the highlights of the farm district. Um, the center piece of the farm district is actually the farmhouse, and the farmhouse will include a demonstration kitchen and probably six to eight uh, rooms um, for vacationers or, or guests of a wedding, that kind of thing. But to the left is actually the chef's cottage, and that is designed to host chefs, some of the best chefs from Seattle and Portland. We're going to be bringing out to Seabrook, hosting them and their families and friends, and they will do a demonstration in the, demonstra in the demonstration kitchen on a Friday night, a farm to table um, dinner, and then also um, a dinner following that. So you can come for the class, you can come for the class, and you can come for the dinner or, or either. So um, they'll be using the gardens around the farmhouse. And then just to the south here, you can see if you're, if you're someone that was thinking about living here full time or part time, we have a community garden that's being designed right now. And that community garden will be for, again, those of us who, who live here year-round or part-time. And again, it's a great way to connect our community. Um, and again, more and more people want to want to know where their food's coming from. And this is just going to be a great amenity for our Seabrook homeowners and a great place for our guests to enjoy just walking around and, and seeing what's growing. Um, you also see our barn here, which is a little co-op barn. Uh, we have individual... Uh, stalls that ha are leased uh, by different homeowners and as demand increases there could be more spaces in the future because the farm district is much larger than what's showing on this on this image um, this is showing about 20 acres uh, 15 to 20 acres and and the farm district is actually about 130 acres in total so this is about about a fourth of, of that. Um, you also see the little orchard cottages. We actually have two of those left. There's seven of them, uh, and we have two more available. And we just released um, some new cottages across the street that are more two and three bedroom cottages if you want something larger. And I'll talk about that more specifically in an upcoming slide. Um, and then we have Crescent, I'm sorry, not Crescent Park, uh, Horseshoe Park, which is our new park. It's about the uh, same size as Crescent Park, the, the large lawn in the center of town. Um, this lawn is actually a little bit bigger. And the beauty of this park is that all these houses directly spill out onto the park. Um, there's no road or, or parking in between the homes and the park. So um, those have been very popular. And there's a few more left there. And then you can see back here we've got two tennis courts and a pickleball court. And all these, these four houses are all sold. Um, but again, there's similar floor plans offered in this middle neighborhood that we just released. So that's just kind of an overview of the farm district. And we're really excited about adding that element to our new town. This is showing some of the new houses on the park. Um, actually, the greenhouse is going to be open for our tour of homes on November 5th. And uh, that'll be our new model home in the farm district. And then you can see to the left other new homes that are under construction. And those are all sold, but there are some other other homes available on uh, the park. You can see our new fire pit, beautiful uh, design. Stephen Polakos, our uh, landscape designer who designs all of our park spaces, uh, has done an amazing job designing this park and all the uh, and individual features of the park uh, he's designed. You can see some images of our barn um, and some of the kids enjoying the space out here. The new tennis courts that are now complete. And again, there's a pickleball court off to the left-hand side that you can't see, but you can, you can see our two new tennis courts, which are beautiful. 
And then this is just showing the farm district kind of zoomed in on what's still available. Basically, everything in red here is sold. Um, you can see lot 350 is available, 352. This is the middle um, middle neighborhood for uh, this first farm district phase, and we have cottages in here, you know, starting in the 400s and up, um, from little two bedroom cottages to uh, three and four bedroom houses that are available here. And then on the park, which is really the, um, you know, the most desirable location probably in the farm district uh, so far, uh, we have two more home sites here on the corner that are larger home sites for someone that wants a large home and a daylight basement. These have ideal um, grades for a daylight basement. And then 326 and 327 also directly on the park. And then our, our um, architect series homes are on lot 337, 323, and 338. So these are all, you know, basically new floor plans never seen in Seabrook to anchor these corners and to make, make the farm district even more beautiful. Uh, here are the little orchard cottages looking down to the barn. Uh, Stephen designed a little procession that leads to the barn. Um, which is going to be really beautiful, and I've actually got an up um, updated photo here, just showing these cottages already going in, and you can see that view down to the barn. And he's planted trees, uh, a little alley of trees, or, which are all fruit trees, and uh, we're looking forward to watching those grow and this little orchard um, become like the, the rendering. Um, and then this is one of the new plans in our uh, middle neighborhood. Uh, in the farm district. This is the foxglove. To me right now, this is one of the the better buys as far as um, what you get for the price, three bedrooms, two and a half baths. You can turn one of the bedrooms into a large media room, which can also have bunks in it. Uh, so we have two different flex options for that, for that floor plan. Um, here's one of the architect series homes. It's the Barnwood, and this is, I believe, on lot 338. Uh, another great home. Um, and this is, I believe, an Allison Ramsey house, which is uh, a well-known architect um, that designs a lot of more farm-style homes around the country and has been highlighted in lots of publications. And then now getting into our oceanfront neighborhood, Elk Creek, this is our final and, and last oceanfront neighborhood. Um, and it's it's kind of sad because we're running out, and these these really you know, people ask me, well, what homes are going to appreciate the most, and what homes are, um, you know, are, have have the most potential? And there's no question that just because of supply and demand, uh, these ocean oceanside homes are um, probably long term, you know, will be the fastest appreciating homes in Seabrook. Obviously, there's no guarantees, but just based on history of these types of communities around the country. Um, we expect to see the highest appreciation uh, over time on the oceanfront homes and, the, of course, the ocean view homes. Here's one of the oceanside homes that we have available. Uh, this is on lot 311. Um, this is Top Sale A. You can find that on our website. And you can see the floor plans. And the sales team can also uh, send you those if you are uh, less, less techy. Um, and then we also have a new uh, Paul Moon design, which is uh, Paul Moon is one of the architects that, that really does a lot of our homes in Seabrook. And again, a great, great uh, designer and architect um, who's designed some of these signature homes. And this is a three-story house right on the ocean. Um, and I believe we do have a contract coming in on this house, uh, but but that is that is something um, that will be built here soon. And then this is a house um, getting up to the larger, more expensive ocean oceanfront homes is a tide view. And again, this is on our website. You can take a look at the floor plans um, and learn more about that house if you're interested on, on the ocean side. Um, we do have a fall sales promotion um, that we just started. And uh, you want to inquire with our sales team um, to learn more about that. Um, we, we really are excited about that promotion, and um, we have some great events to come out uh, coming up uh, in Seabrook, and then also um, in this is actually in Woodenville. Um, we've got a uh, an event at the Red Hook Brewery 
Tuesday, October 25th, and it's from 6.30 to 8.30. And um, we'll be sending you uh, an RSVP for this um, with, with this recorded uh, webinar, and so you can sign up if you're interested. But we'd love to see you out there. Our whole team will be up there. We'll be giving um, uh, a lot of the new and new information on house plans, what's available, and just a chance to kind of meet us and uh, learn more about Seabrook and, and what we're all about. Um, we also have a tour of homes coming on November 5th, and we've got a lot of great homes in the lineup, from Oceanside homes to small cottages to, to our new model home in the farm district. But anyone that wants to see lots of different floor plans and designs, that's the weekend to come out and learn more about the homes that are available and see um, see some of these newer homes that are available on other lots. Most all of the homes that will be on the tour, of course, are for, are, are sold, but um, you'll be able to see homes that also can be built on other lots, so it give you a good perspective on, on what's available and what the homes are like. We also have some other events, again, out here in, in Seabrook this fall. Um, we've got a tennis social on our new tennis courts, of course, in, in September the 24th. Um, we have our Bigfoot Brew Fest that every year is growing uh, more and more. Lots of great breweries out here. Great time to come out and enjoy the fall. Uh, we have our first clam dig October 15th, which is um, a real heritage out here, is, is uh, bringing families down to the beach and, and doing these clam digs. Um, we usually have packed weekends for, for those. And then on October 29th, we have a Seabrook trick-or-treat. Even though most people are going to be trick-or-treating at home, those those kids that come out to the beach uh, will actually get two, trick or, two nights of trick-or-treat. And this is just an idyllic place to, to do that with the kids. Um, and then also on October 29th, our event planner has some harvest activities and some fun things like a hay maze and all sorts of all sorts of good stuff. Um, and then we also are now with Main Street growing and our retail business is growing, we're going to be f very much focused on the holiday season and bringing more people out, of course, to enjoy the ocean and, and to shop and um, you know be at the beach during that time. You know, there's a lot of families that are skiers. And I know growing up, um, our family, we, we didn't ski, but we always went out to the beach during the holidays. And so it's one of my favorite times, actually, to be at the ocean. And uh, we expect Seabrook to be a, a very um, uh, important destination during those times uh, as we go forward. And that really ends the webinar. Um, obviously, we'd love for you to reach out to Rob and Holly or Darcy if you have any questions about the homes that we talked about or any details on, on the Main Street. Um, we are taking reservations on some of the residential units on Main Street now. And so if you're interested in those, you can contact them. And uh, again, this, this webinar will be recorded and sent out. So for those of you, those of you who missed it, uh, we will we'll get that out, and, and you can share it with your family and friends. You all have a great day, and thank you for taking the time for our webinar, webinar and we hope to see you out here soon. Bye-bye.